Thank you so much for watching today's video. I'm going to be showing you how to read in treble clef. Last week I released a tutorial how to read in tenor clef and you can find it right there. I'm posting the link. Although I do gear these tutorials generally towards cellists, this video and last week's video will help anyone no matter what instrument you play. So I'm just going to show you a quick trick or just, you know, a certain way to think about treble clef if you're starting from bass clef. And for most, you know, for cellists, they read in bass clef, so that's kind of um, where I'm coming from. I'm going to go ahead and draw a staff right above this one so that you can see the relationship between the two. As you know, every single staff has exactly five lines. Um, and today I'm going to kind of make a bigger expanded staff so that you can, again, see the relationship. One more. Okay, these are badly spaced, but I tried. So basically, I'm gonna go ahead and start on A in bass clef, and I'm not drawing out exactly the A major scale because A major has three sharps, so I don't wanna worry about sharps or flats because I don't wanna confuse anyone, so we are starting on A and we're going to A, but we're not going to, um, we're not gonna worry about sharps. Okay, so here we go from A to A. Obviously we go through the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Above here we have B, and then this is where the two staves, um, how they're related. So here's bass clef, here is treble clef, and there is only one ledger line in between the two. So I'm pretending I'm stacking bass and treble together. Um, and so you're going to see a continuous line going up like this. So A, B, C, D, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, so here is middle C. And if any of you pianists know, this is, you know, basically in the middle of the keyboard. Um, on the cello, middle C is finger two on the A string. So put a finger two here. So this note in bass clef, middle C, this note in treble clef is also middle C. And from here, we start going into treble clef. So for tenor clef, you know, we actually have to transpose, we have to think about this, but whenever we're um, reading in treble clef, it is not quite that difficult. We just, we start over. It's like, a, it's just an upward motion like this and it just keeps going. So let me continue this up to here. The A that we're starting on, we pass through another A, U, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Again, here's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. So it spans one, two, three octaves. Going from here to here, that's three octaves, and it just keeps on going up. For the cello, let me go ahead and give you the actual example of the A major scale. And A major, of course, has three sharps, F sharp. C sharp and G sharp. Now that we are actually transforming this into the A major scale by adding the sharps, we have three sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. Um, and I will put them up here as well. Oops, there you go, sorry, couldn't see that. So three sharps. <clears throat> and so let me show you the, the fingers that you would use. So one, two, this is extended two, extended four, and then open. And this is for the cello. Um, for any other instrument, uh, no, but these are just the, the fingers for, that the cellist will use. And then one, extend two again, extend four, because here we have our B natural, but here we have our um, C sharp, which of course is in the key signature, but just to help, I will write it there as well. And then up here, we have our F sharp and then our G sharp, which is why we have extended two and extended four. This is extended two because it's B natural. If we played regular two, it would be B flat. Um, we keep going, open one. We are changing this from a C natural to a C sharp because we're actually turning it into the A major scale. We're gonna change this from finger two to finger three. So finger three. So we shift up and we play first finger on D. And this is all on the A string now. Ever since here, the rest of this is on the A string. 
and then three here, and then one F sharp, G sharp, two. I guess you could think about it as an extended two. It's yeah, and then three on A, and then from here we have the top octave, um, and so you can do. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. Most major scale, the, the most major scales, the top octave, you always keep that fingering pattern. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. So really, I showed you all of this to show you the relationship between bass clef and treble clef, but really to start memorizing the notes in treble clef, I think it's better to memorize the lines. Um, to memorize the lines and spaces, you know what the names are. The lines are E, G, B, sorry, <laughs> can't see that. E, G, B, um, D, and F, F, F. So, you know, people come up with ways to memorize this. I think one of them, I don't use this because I've already memorized the notes, but I think one of them is like every good boy does fine. You can come up with all sorts of things. And then of course the spaces are um, F, A, C, and then of course we have E and then G. So yeah, these are lines and spaces. And this is just the best way to help you memorize it. So to actually show you an application for real music, real notes, all that, I decided to use the Swan since it does have treble clef in it and it's also very well known. Um, yeah, I used this sheet music when I was like, uh, I think 10, and it's completely colored. I don't know why I felt the need to do that, but yes, <laughs> it looks ridiculous. Um, so here we're gonna take this measure. So as you can see, the second to top line, right there, right here, would be D. So we have D, down another line to B, so B, down another line to G, so G, down one more to E. So E, and then we can figure it out by stepwise motion. And this piece does have one sharp. It is F sharp. And so going up to this next space, so the bottom space is F, but since we have an F sharp in the key signature, it's going to be F sharp. And then we go up another note, so E, F, G. So this note is G. Looking at examples like that is good. And you know, understanding the relationship between bass and treble is also good. But I really think that this, this right here is the thing that's going to help you most. Just memorize the lines and spaces like you memorized for bass clef. And just remember that it's quite high up on the cello. You know, if this right here, if this note is middle C, you have C, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, you know, so on. This note right here is middle C, which is finger two on the cello. All of this is going to be on the A string and it's, it's going to be really high. So whenever you see treble clef, you can usually expect to go into thumb position most of the time. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. And other than that, there's really not much else to say about it. It's just memory and getting used to it and sight reading a lot of a lot of this kind of music. Again, if you want to learn the swan, it's a very good, uh, I guess, semi-beginner piece. It's not, um, you know, it's, it has its difficulties. If you have any further questions, let me know in the comment section below. If this video helped you, be sure to give it a thumbs up and, um, you know, share it if you think anyone else would like it. And yeah, I hope that this helped.